Hey everybody, in this video we're going to make a custom progress bar for use in Microsoft Access. Access comes with a built-in progress bar. It displays in the bottom right hand corner of the access window. However, it's small and it often goes unnoticed by our users. So we like to make a larger progress bar that we can place in a more conspicuous location on one of our forms. So I think an ideal solution for this will be a custom control. However, that is an area that is, is fraught with difficulty and danger in the access world. So barring that, we're going to build a progress bar right onto our form. I'm going to make it easy to copy and paste this progress bar from one form to another, and we're going to have all of the functionality in the code encapsulated in a single method. So again, that can just simply be copied from one form to another to make it as easy as possible, to make it as close as we can to a custom control. So let's take a quick look at what we're going to build. We're going to have we're going to build a form, a single button, and our progress bar. At the top, we're going to have a label where we can place some verbiage or description of what task is being performed. And in the bottom of this box is where our progress bar is going to go. So that is our goal. So let's go on over to our blank form and get started. First, I want to put a stub for a method in our code window. And I want to make that the onload event. We're going to use that to set the default position of the bar at the beginning when the form loads. So first, let's drag a button onto the form. I don't want to use any of these. We're going to put our own code behind the button. So let's just drag it bigger and give it a, a caption here. And I want to give our button a name real fast. We're going to call it Command Start. Alright, next we're going to put a label on the form. And we're going to set the default text or the default caption to idle. We're going to drag it out about this big or so. And we're going to give it a name that we'll need to refer to in our code later on. Label current task. Next, we're going to drag a rectangle put it underneath our label. I'm going to make it the same width as our label and bump it up right underneath and make it nice and thin here. It's not too large. Give it a name or box progress. I want that to be I want it to be flat rather than etched. So this box is going to be the border around our progress bar. And it will give the users a visual indication of where 100% is, where done is. Inside of this box we're going to place an image. Now you could place another rectangle and fill it with a solid color. I'm going to go a little bit further than that and I'm going to place an image on our form. And I'm going to put a custom image I built just for this. We're going to use this image right here. I want to talk about this image really fast. I'm going to drag it over here and I'm going to zoom into it so we can see it up close. And what I've done is taken a solid green and I've put some highlights and some shading on it to make it look a little bit more rounded. And so I'm going to drag this out and make it wide so we can see how to configure this image in here. Now right now it's a, a square right in the middle. What we want to do is we're going to turn picture tiling on and leave it on zoom do that it'll fill the image box however big we make it. Now it's also important if you're going to use an image that you use an image that you can stretch side to side without it distorting. Okay if you notice that this thing will distort if we stretch it north and south but we make it <coughs> wider and it still looks normal. So we want the height of our image to be the same as the height of the box that it's going to be inside of. There we go. We're going to stretch and it'll make the, the width zero. So it essentially disappears. And we're going to grab it and put it over here on the left side of our progress bar. And the last thing we want to do to our image is we want to give it a name that we can refer to in our code. And we're going to call it image progress. The next thing I want to do is I want to wrap a frame around the progress bar to label it as a progress bar and give us a visual grouping of the, the, the label and the progress bar itself. I'm going to use an option frame for that. 
We're just going to short circuit the wizard here because we don't need any of that help. What we're going to do though is wrap it around like this, stretch it out, it goes around, uh, slide it down a little bit. thing I want to do is I want to change the four colors of these two guys here whoops and I'll choose a darker blue here and there we go now the cool thing about this type of setup well, the way we're gonna have the code written you can drag this around the form anywhere you want and it'll still continue to work you can resize the bar you can either smaller bar and the code will not need to be changed in order for it to continue to work, and we'll see that in just a minute. So we'll save this and head over to our code. I see that I'm missing a click event for our button, so let's get that really grab that really fast. Click event procedure. There we go. We'll have those waiting for us when we need them. Okay, the first thing I want to pull in is a form level variable that's going to hold our percentage complete. We're going to not want to update the progress bar with every single record or every single task of our total that we move through. We want to reduce the number of updates we make to the screen as we're moving through our process. We don't want to bog down our process in order to update our customers. So if our, even though we might have gone through 10 or 20 or 30 tasks or records or items or whatever it is, the percentage complete might not have changed enough to register a number uh, from 19 to 20 or 20 to 21. And if that hasn't happened, then we don't we want to short circuit the, uh, the screen update. So we're going to use that, this variable, to do that. So next, I'm going to copy in all the code we need to update our progress bar. So we're going to call this method update progress, and we're going to feed it three variables: the current item that we're on, the total number of items in the task, and then a task name. The task name we're going to put in that label that we put right above the bar. So the very first thing we'll do here is me label current task to caption and change that to task name. And we have two variables up here. We have a percentage complete, which is what we're going to be calculating every time we call this. And int width is the width we're going to make our image, which represents our progress bar. So after we put our task name on our label, next we want to validate the numbers we've received. Now, if the current item we're on is zero or less than zero, if it's less than zero, we have a problem. Okay, we don't want to do anything. If we're on item number zero, then we want to set the width of our image to zero, our progress bar to zero. Nothing's happened yet. And we want to test for zero because we're going to intentionally call this on form load and tell it progress is zero so that the bar will reset itself when the form is loaded. Okay. Next, we want to test total items. That's the, the total number of tasks in our task list, if you will. And if that's equal to zero, we want to, again, set our image bar to zero um, and get out of our method here because we're going to be dividing by this number later. So we, we don't want to blow up our process for a user interface or progress bar like this. If we've given it some valid numbers to work with, we want to calculate the percentage complete we are in our task. So whatever item we're on, divided by the total number of items, is going to give us some sort of decimal, one or less. And here's where we're going to compare the percentage complete we are this time compared to the percentage complete we were on the last time we came through here and tried to update our progress bar. So what I'm looking for here is I only want to proceed if we've changed whole numbers, if you will, in terms of percentage complete. We're going to get we're going to get small decimal changes if we have a large number of tasks and we've moved from just one item to the next item. So. So we're going to take our percentage complete, which is a decimal number here, multiply it by 100 to get the two significant digits on the left side of the decimal, and then turn it into an integer. And do the same thing to our hold percentage complete, which was the percentage complete the last time we came through here. If they're equal, then again, I want to get out of here and not update the progress bar anymore. Now, if they're different, we want to go on down, update the percentage, the hold percentage complete to what we just calculated, and then we want to decide, are we going to actually update our progress bar? and make it move. Now again, I said I, we, we, I don't think we want to update the progress bar for every single item that we, we work on. I think we want to update it in chunks because anytime your software interacts 
with your hardware, whether it be uh, hitting a database or, or a file that's on a hard drive or going across the network, or even, and even interacting with your monitor, there's friction. Uh, the, 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 the physical devices are slower than the software is. So we want to reduce the amount of, of those, those types of tasks if we can. So what I'm going to do here is take our percentage complete, multiply it by 100, so again we get a whole number out of it, and divide it by 5. We're going to use mod here though and see if we get a remainder. If we get 0 for a remainder, then we're going to pr proceed and update the bar. What that's going to give us is we'll update our bar in 5% increments. All right. And all we got to do here is calculate how wide do we need to make the image to represent the percentage complete we're on. And that's pretty easy to do. We just look at how wide is that box that we've wrapped around our image, how wide is it, multiply it by our percentage complete. So let's say we are 0.45 percentage complete. We're going to calculate the width of, what is the width of 0.45 of our box? And store it in this integer, and then we will set our image width to that integer. Then we want to make sure we update the screen. And do events, we'll do that, as well as me.repaint or form.repaint. Okay, so now we need to write some code to actually test this out. And that's where these come in. to call our update progress method. On form load I want to call it, call update progress, and I want to give it zero for current task, zero for total items, and we're going to give it a label though. We're going to tell it to put idle in the caption there, in the label caption, just to show that it's not doing anything. And this, this will fire every time we open our, our form. Next, we're going to create a fake task for us to run through. All, right, and all this is is this is just this is just counting one through one hundred thousand. Okay, so I'm going to make a long call it long item, and I'll make a constant here, long total, set it equal to one hundred thousand. So we're going to basically count through a hundred thousand one at a time. Just we're just making a task here that takes a while to run so that we can see the task bar operate. I'm going to make a do while loop, do while and loop. Long on, as long as long item is less than or equal to our total, we'll go into the loop and keep going. Each time we go through, we're going to increment long item by one. And then I've got a, an if, else if, and an else here. And all this is doing is allowing us to change the, the text that shows up on that caption. And after we've made it up to 100,000, we'll pop out of our loop and we'll call it one more time and give it the label task complete. And at that point, this number and this number should be equal. And at that point, this item and this item should be equal, and our progress bar should show 100%, or it should be stretched all the way across that box that we wrapped around it. So let's head over to our form, pull up a form view, and execute it. And there we go. I'm going to put us back in design view here. So if you need a progress bar on another form, or even a different form in a different database, all you got to do is copy these guys and paste them into the new form. And then you come over to your code window and do the same thing. You copy your update progress method and paste it into your new form. Again, the width that you make it on the form isn't going to matter because it's going to adjust itself because of this statement right here to whatever you've dragged it to or stretched it to on the new form, and then you would simply call it like this from your code, and that's it. So how do we handle a situation if we don't have simply a number of items we're looping through and working on, but instead, let's say we have three or four tasks that we need to complete, and each one of those tasks takes a certain amount of time. Let's say you have a, a stored procedure in a SQL Server database that you're calling, and it's going to take a couple seconds to five to ten seconds to run, and you have to do that two or three times in a row. I think you need to build a slightly different progress bar. Instead of building a bar where you give it the item number you're on out of the total number of items, you build a progress bar that you just feed a, a single number, a single whole number. So what you do then is 
for each task, you would decide, okay, after task one, I'm going to be 20% complete, after task two, 40% complete, and so on, and then call this progress bar after each task completes. Update it to 20, update it to 40, update it to 60, and so forth. So that could give you two types of progress bars to have at your disposal, to, depending upon what type of situation you have. So I hope you enjoyed this video, hope you learned something, and we'll see you next time.